Hey, everybody! This is another fluff narrative. People have requested to hear the rest of the fluff from the Tyranix Codex. So now, instead of simply picking a part, I will start at the beginning of the fluff. Uh, with who are the Tyranids and why are they here and just keep going until I got to where I've been before. And it starts with <clears throat> the Great Devourer. The Tyranids are unlike any other race to be encountered by humanity. They are the ultimate predators and of all living things from the lowliest insect to the most advanced civilization are nothing but their prey. Only now are the inhabitants of the galaxy realizing the scale of the threat. Unless the Tyranids can be stopped, it will mean nothing less than the extinction of all. The Tyranids are likened to a galactic swarm consuming everything in its path, feeding on entire worlds and leaving only dead husks in their wake. Their threat is such that an unprotected planet can be infested and stripped clean of all its organic material in a matter of weeks without even slowing down the greater advance of the Hive Fleet. The Intergalactic Predator the Tyranids are not native to our galaxy. They have journeyed here by transversing the unspeakable cold of intergalactic space, where time and space conspire to hold galaxies apart with inconceivable distances. Yet the Tyranid have crossed this space nonetheless moving through the empty darkness for countless millennia to reach the rim of our galaxy. Who can say for sure what compelled an entire race to make such an epic venture? Perhaps the Tyranids have, been, have already consumed everything of worth in their home galaxy and must find new feeding grounds or starve. It is possible that the Tyranids have been preying on galaxies since time immemorial, and ours is but the latest to feel their predations. Some have even speculated that the Tyranids are in flight from an even greater threat, be it a galactic disaster or another more fearsome race and have risked the nothingness between galaxies rather than face extinction. Whatever the truth, for the Tyranids to have endured such a voyage must have required utter single-mindedness and unimaginable energy. During their journey, the Tyranids slumbered in a state of frozen hibernation, but now they have arrived, they have awoken, and they are hungry. The Hive Fleets. The Tyranids are a space-born race that have inveigled their way into the realms of man, as well as those of other Xenos, like a disease spreading through a healthy body. The Tyranids have traveled in great fleets of gigantic living creatures that serve as spacecraft, each of each one a home to countless lesser Tyranid organisms grown in the bubbling organ sacs of the vessel's reproductive chambers. All of these creatures are born to serve the single entity that is the ship. And the ship itself exists only as part of the entity that is the Hive Fleet. When a Hive Fleet encounters a prey world, it does not invade for territorial gain or out of a sense of pride or vengeance. Indeed, it is doubtful the Tyranids even comprehend such concepts. Rather, 
They invade to harvest valuable biomass and feed their insatiable hunger. The Tyranids require an endless supply of food, not only to nourish the hive fleets, but to grow new organisms. Therefore, when a hive fleet invades a planet rich in life, every action of every Tyranid creature is honed to a single goal, the total and rapid absorption of that planet's population, ecosystems, and bioresources. To this end, the Hive Fleet creates an army with the express purpose of overcoming the Prey World's defenders before the planet is stripped of every scrap of biomatter and devoured. <coughs> Creatures of the Swarm Tyranid warrior organisms are creatures of visceral horror, implacable monsters with razor-sharp claws, which can tear a man apart in the blink of an eye, and grotesque biocannons that fire hungry, parasitic projectiles into their prey's flesh. Every weapon and projectile used by the Hive Fleets is a living organism, grown from the reconstituted biomatter of previous invasions. The Tyranids have no form of mechanical technology and instead harness an advanced form of biotechnology to create organic equivalents of the tools and weaponry and ammunition used by other races. These creatures live in a highly symbiotic fashion fusing into each other's flesh so that it is often impossible to say where one Tyranid creature ends and another begins. In this way, Tyranid warrior beasts wield living weapons that are literally extensions of their own bodies, each one a killing machine, perfectly adapted to slaughter its victims. The bio-construct nature of the Tyranids makes them a terrible foe to face, for their armies contain a creature specialized for every conceivable facet of warfare, which can be altered and regrown to suit a battle's needs in a short span of time. Thus can a hive fleet adapt to generate a force capable of overwhelming any opposition, unleashing a vast throng of ferocious alien monsters that can fly, run, burrow, and stalk through the defenses of any foe. The Hive Mind The Magos Biologis of the Imperium categorizes each Tyranid Hive Fleet as a separate force, an individual entity that competes with other hive fleets for resources. Indeed, each is a self-sufficient, appearing to exhibit different strategies and developing unique creatures to overcome its prey. However, the truth is more complex, for each hive fleet is but a splinter of one greater assemblage. The Tyranids' numbers are vast beyond counting, swarms so large that they block out the very stars. Yet each and every creature is but a single cell in the living body of a single superorganism. Every thought and action, every spark of life in the Tyranid race is bound and interlinked into a single unfathomable consciousness a great entity that stretches across hundreds of light years of space. This gasalt sentience is known as the hive mind. It holds all tyranids in psychic bound that enables them to act together in perfect unison. Under the influence of this ancient consciousness, the tyranids have fed on countless planets and devoured civilization since time immemorial. The majority of Tyranid organisms have no distinct minds as a human would understand it, having been created to perform a single task to the exclusion of all else. 
Unless the implacable mill will of the hive mind instructs them to do otherwise, these organisms will simply fulfill the functions for which they were created, acting on nothing more than instinct. Larger, more complicated tyranid beasts have been grown to make limited decisions appropriate to current stimuli and situations. But even these actions are subordinate to the goals of the hive mind. The hive mind's influence is strongest in the vicinity of creatures such as tyranid warriors and feared hive tyrants. These beings are able to communicate with their kin, not through language, but through a synaptic form of telepathy, telepathy through which they rely, relay and channel the will of the hive mind. Under the command of such creatures, the Tyranids operate in perfect unison, slaved to the psychic imperatives of a single communal intelligence. However, should the synapse creatures be slain, the link between individual creatures and the hive mind will be severed. Many of the lesser organisms will revert to their basic animalistic behaviors. For this reason... The Tyranid swarms do not only have a single commander, but many to ensure the hive mind's synaptic control is maintained across the entire Tyranid race. <clears throat> the Shadow in the Warp The coming of a Tyranid hive fleet is preceded by a smothering psychic sim signal that envelops entire star systems and disrupts all forms of warp travel and communication. Swallowed up by a psychic static, whole worlds suddenly go deathly silent, giving no clues as to what is unfolding on the surface below or of what terrors are about to befall. This is the shadow in the warp, and it heralds imminent invasion and horror. It is unknown if the shadow in the warp is created deliberately by the hive fleets or if it is simply a byproduct of the hive mind's innate synaptic control. In any case, the shadow in the warp creates fear and panic wherever it falls, instilling a pervasive dread into the minds of a prey world's defenders, plunging entire planets into misery and despair. For highly psychic races, such as the Eldar, or for the luckless psychers caught within the innervating effect, the malaise is magnified tenfold. Should a psyker attempt to use his otherworldly abilities, the cerebral cacophony worsens even further. The psychic sound of a billion alien thoughts scratch at his mind, and unless he is particularly strong-willed, he will be pitched into an insanity where he will repeatedly utter phrases in a tongue too alien to properly pronounce. For, alien, for races such as the Imperium of Man whose means of interstellar communication and travel rely highly upon specialized psychers such as astropaths and navigators, the shadow in the warp is one of the deadliest facets of the Tyranid menace. Bereft of their means to call for reinforcements or safely navigate surrounding space, the worlds of the Imperium are easily isolated from the wider galaxy. This means that by the time the shadow in the warp falls, it is already too late. These beleaguered planets are effectively on their own. They must fend for themselves and face the Tyranid swarm with the weapons they have at to hand or die in the attempt. Destroyer of Worlds The Tyranids do not communicate with other races. And why should they do so? Tyranids are as far above other life forms as mankind is above the domesticated livestock it consumes. The Tyranids cannot be reasoned with, appeased, or surrendered to. There can be no hope of mercy from such a foe. 
To face the Tyranids is simply a matter of survival. Kill or be consumed. So far, the Tyranids have been devouring worlds in the eastern fringe, feasting on the very borders of the Imperium. But with every passing year, the Hive Fleets push deeper into regions of populated space, whilst still more approach from the intergalactic void and emerge from their eons-long slumbers. The thought processes of the Hive Mind are gathering pace as more Tyranids wake and recall the age-old purpose of their kind. Feed. Grow. Survive. And that is the introduction. Next, I'm going to move on to First Contact, which tells the story of how humanity first got eaten by the Nids. And that I will put into part two. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.